right, right at this moment, uh, we're about to get uh, the word that they're in orbit, and let's uh, let's find out now as we listen to mission control. Well, here's Vice President Agnew. Let's go to him for a moment. Members of the Apollo launch team on this 11th consecutive successful manned Apollo launch. I'd also like to extend best wishes to the mission control team and the recovery team and of course the crew of Apollo 17 for a totally successful completion of this mission. A lot of people seem to believe that this being the last Apollo marks the end of our space program. That is not the case. We hope that this will be only the beginning of more extensive explorations of space and the use of the great collateral information that comes out of it. We know that we have coming up the exciting Skylab program, which involves four launches next year, one unmanned and three manned. We know that in 1975, we're going to go forward with the Apollo Soyuz rendezvous mission. And we hope that this is a forerunner of increased cooperative efforts in space where great nations may draw closer together through constructive use of their capabilities. Also, we look forward to the space shuttle, uh, which opens up infinite possibilities for increased capability in this kind of travel. And for the development of all of the science and application systems that have begun so advantageously for the world. And so I extend my congratulations again to each of you for the work that you have done in making the Apollo program such a success. And to those of you who have worked with Apollo so effectively at the close of this particular stage in our space program, I extend our thanks for your determination and your dedication. While we were waiting uh, for this trouble to be clarified and rectified, I was impressed by the tremendous care that was taken to make certain that no one was placed in a position of jeopardy, to make certain that everything was correct before we went ahead. This is the kind of care and dedication that you've brought to your work, and for this, the nation and the world respect and admire the American space program. Again, congratulations and best wishes to you all. That was Vice President Agnew, of course, as he addressed the men in the firing room and launch control center here at uh, Merritt Island at Cape Kennedy uh, after the launch of successful launch of Apollo 17. The man in the blue shirt uh, there is Kurt Debus, uh, who is the director of the Kennedy Space Center and who has uh, supervised the launch of all of these Apollo missions. The astronauts are now successfully in their Earth orbit. They're in an orbit 107.5 by 102.9 uh, statute miles. That uh, was to have been a circular orbit at 107 statute miles. So they're uh, very close to uh, the orbit that they wished. They could tweak that up a little bit if they wanted to and put it directly uh, on uh, target, but that probably won't be necessary. The error is so small. And uh, now, uh, their uh, next uh, big uh, mission, after getting into orbit successfully two and a half hours late, uh, is uh, comes along at uh, 3.44 in the morning, or 3.30. 34 this morning, uh, that uh, three hours and 21 minutes into the mission when they will fire off uh, their S-4B engine again and start on their trip to the moon. That will be on the second orbit around the Earth out over the Atlantic. A little later on in the morning then, an hour and uh, so after they go into their translunar coast, uh, they will dock uh, with the S-4B, separate from her, turn around, dock, pull the lunar module out to, from uh, its uh, shelter on the top of the S-4B, send the S-4B on its way to crash into the moon, and they'll be on the way to the moon. To arrive at the moon on uh, Thursday, or rather on Tuesday afternoon, uh, they 
um, I was correct that Monday afternoon, they arrive at the moon at 2.55 p.m. Eastern time. There will be three walks on the moon, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, our time of about seven hours each. They start back to Earth on Saturday at 6.31 p.m., and their splashdown is some 400 miles southeast of Samoa in the Pacific on Tuesday afternoon, the 19th of December, and plenty of time for them to get home for Christmas. What a Christmas will be for this family after a year and a half of intensive work on this mission, most of the time spent away from home on training missions, and now they'll be back with their families. Their mission completed successfully, we're all expecting. We, uh, we just uh, know that it's going to go that way. The excitement of this launch uh, has been absolutely uh, right up to what we all expected, I think. It was a spectacular sight. We have heard from our old friend, of the police chief of Miami Beach, Rocky Pomerantz, however, that it was not visible from Miami Beach. Uh, strangely enough, we would have thought so from here. It certainly was visible at Cape Kennedy. And Wally, we got a buffeting here tonight, uh, such as I don't think we've had since that first test of a Saturn V. Uh, we really were shaken in for a very long time. Yeah, I was quite surprised. Uh, I think it may be the humidity, but I'm not sure. That was, uh, it was yeah. a real shaking we had. It uh, certainly was. Uh, some of those who were standing outside of our staff around here, my secretary, Carolyn Dorsett, was outside, and she said it didn't seem as great as it was in the past to her, but it sure was in here. That window shook, and the ceiling uh, shook on us, and, uh, and it, it, it was uh, very exciting right here. Well, now we've got them uh, on the way to the moon. Commander Eugene Serman, Navy captain, 38 years old, veteran of two space flights and uh, two space rookies. The lunar module pilot who go to the surface of the moon with him, Dr. Harrison Jack Schmidt, a geologist, uh, 37 years old, and uh, the spacecraft commander who will remain with the command module America, Ron Evans, a 39-year-old uh, commander in the Navy and a Vietnam veteran, the first one to go into space. They're on the way to a point in the moon and the upper right-hand corner, as you look at that moon uh, in the northeast quadrant, that would be an area called Torrance Littro, a mountainous region southeast of the on the rim of the Sea of Serenity. And uh, there they hope to find perhaps the oldest and the youngest rocks on the moon. And that's why they're going to that uh, particular area. The uh, uh, area is dangerous. Some say it's the most dangerous uh, spot, although others think that 16's high peaks and boulders might have made it a little more dangerous. The landing site here is not as rugged as the actual landing site for 16, that is the terrain itself. It's a valley, but it is between three massifs or three mountains running up to 7,000 feet high. They've got to clear those and come in for a on-target landing. It's expected that they'll make that. Uh, there hadn't been any reason to indicate in previous flights that they should have trouble with it. The cost of the mission, $450 million, putting the total cost of these manned missions, this is the sixth landing of nine trips to the moon uh, at uh, something over $25 billion. So Apollo 17 on the way. Of course, uh, CBS News will be following the mission throughout. Uh, we will have our CBS News Space Center uh, in Houston and in New York uh, tuned in to the the every development of the mission and come on the air at any time that it seems necessary and at some set uh, schedules later on of the high points of this flight of Apollo 17. President Nixon has sent his uh, congratulations to Apollo 17. He said it's a great step for man and uh, certainly I think all of our viewers and all of us at the CBS News would send our congratulations along too. This has been uh, a report of the launch of Apollo 17. Captain Wally Shira participating with me, I'm happy to say. Uh, this is Walter Cronkite at our CBS News Space Center at Cape Kennedy.
This has been a CBS News special, Farewell to the Moon, the flight of Apollo 17.